Many of you have been with us from the beginning, but there are a lot of people here who I think are wondering, okay, so what is this Cal IT squared thing anyway? And that's what I'm gonna to try to uh, talk briefly about. Uh, this was a, uh, you know, a vision that uh, Governor Gray Davis had. He worked very closely with President Atkinson to, back in 2000, to have a call for proposals among the UC campuses to organize themselves into three or what became four institutes. Uh, it, was a, it was a rigorous peer review to sort out which ones were going to be winners. Uh, and so we had to put together a vision and a team from scratch uh, uh, the chancellors uh, of UC San Diego and Irvine decided that they would be the two schools that partnered. Uh, we've later, as you heard, uh, added in affiliate partners like San Diego State, USC. But the fundamental, I went back because we just had our site visit, um, the, first, the first review actually by UCOP of the four institutes, um, was it just a week ago? <laughs> Wow, time flies when you're having so much fun. Um, so I actually had to go back and read the proposal again. And amazingly, we are keeping a sort of a laser-like focus on the, uh, what we said we were gonna do, which is to look at the emergence of a whole set of technologies and what will become the new internet being built out throughout the physical world uh, with all kinds of sensor capabilities the photonic backplane uh, that will have vast capacity compared to what we do now, and introducing into universities something that has been absent for a very long time, which is the notion that there needs to be a lot of basic research on the system, the integrated system at scale, not just breaking it down into individual components. The job's not done when you know how every molecule works. You gotta put it back together and figure out how a living cell or an animal uh, functions. And it's the same thing for these large engineering systems. Now why is that the job of the universities? Well, it didn't used to be, and that's the point. Uh, Bob Lucky, who is one of the top observers of the telecom industry for many years um, at the Bell Labs, Bellcor for the regional Bells, and now Telcordia, part of SAIC, went back to the basic research journal in telecommunications, the IEEE transactions. In 1970, 70% 70 of the uh, authors on these papers were from U.S. industry. Universities really were in the 10, 15% range. Today, industries are the authors of 7% instead of 70. And 85% of the authors are from universities. Notice that non-U.S. universities are actually a little ahead of U.S. universities. And so if you have a sense that there's kind of a global competition going on, and it's the universities that are leading the innovation and basic research in telecommunication system, that's actually what's going on according to the data. So that means that places like UCSD and Irvine that are building these kind of institutes and are um, uh, constructing, actually, an entire new faculty and a new research agenda are doing so because uh, they want to be the leaders of this new world in which the universities are where the research is happening. So when we pulled together a proposal, we were actually went out looking for two things. The professors who were working in all of the subcomponents that were going to be necessary for this new internet, but also who knew how to work well and play well with others. And that was quite a strong filter, actually, because most <laughs> faculty have been chosen through the Darwinian evolution of the system that gets them to where they are by single author paper. And so it turns out, nonetheless, that in that population, I would say there's about, this represents about 3% of the faculty on the two campuses. Uh, were people who wanted to be able to work in multidisciplinary teams on larger scale problems than they and a graduate student could do. And, and so we, were, we developed this whole notion of these layers as being the, you know, if you sort of go into the future 15 years, look around and see how it's changed by all of this internet and IT technology in your brain, in your imagination. And then come back and think, well, what would we have to have been doing the research on now so that 15 years later it's in common use in the marketplace? All of these are uh, parts of it. 
as well as the applications, and that's the key thing about Cal ID Squared, is we couple intimately the applications with the underlying technologies. How is that field of application being transformed? And we do that by living in the future. Because it turns out if it takes 15 years from something being developed in the lab until it's widely deployed, if you take what's in the lab and, and deploy it on the campuses now, you're 15 years ahead of the future. And so you get to see the policy issues, for instance, the changes in education, and this is why we have a lot of industrial partners, how the markets may change and how the demand may change for these underlying pieces. From the beginning, the two chancellors had this notion that there's one institute with two campuses, and now with affiliated campuses even more. And so uh, for each of these layers, um, we developed, uh, first of all, divisional uh, leadership. So I'm the, my day job is putting this thing together across both campuses. I'll be in Irvine, for instance, all day tomorrow, as I am several times a month. Um, Ron Graham is my chief scientist. He was chief scientist at AT&T Bell Labs before he came here to the computer science department. Stephanie Sides is director of communication, again, for the two campus institute. And then Ramesh Rao and Bill Parker have been the two division directors, the two campus directors, and we just finished a search. Albert Yee will take over in January as the permanent director up at Irvine, uh, um, worldwide expert uh, in material science. But coming back to the layers, so on each campus, each layer has a faculty leader, and those two faculty then coordinate with each other across the campuses, and this ties the campuses together at many, many levels. And then they also work to organize the faculty in their layer on their individual campus. So this is a management construct. We invented this as a way to systematically begin to tie the faculties and, of course, therefore, the students uh, across the two uh, campuses. So this layer structure uh, is very important, but it's not enough because it again has that business of breaking a system down into components. So now we need to do something to reintegrate it all. So we came up with this notion of living laboratories, uh, which then use components from all of the layers in a persistent living laboratory. So ubiquitous connectivity. You're going to see many things today that are examples of projects that live in the ubiquitous connectivity living laboratory that tie together everything from new materials, nano, biomims, sensors, and so forth, with wireless technologies, with software, maybe in the environment application, and maybe with a policy component of how that changes things in, in um, policy with educational students involved. Sensor nets is another one, knowledge and data systems, Lambda Grid, which deals with the whole photonic revolution. Um, I have a project called the Optiputer in that area. Um, ecological observatories, um, intelligent transportation vision called AutoNet, and you'll see a lot of that today here. Uh, the Biological Imaging Research Network and Biomedical Sciences. And then finally, computer gaming, visual arts, the interactive technology and popular culture. Uh, something that I think is going to actually be uh, a big part of Cal IT squared. So in each of these vertical convective currents, we have multiple projects. And what you see today, uh, you know, if you go through your folder, uh, it, it lists all of the demos, the talks. All these are projects, each of which is multidisciplinary and multi-faculty, that live in among this sort of two-dimensional coordinate system. So where did this Cal IT squared, this is the first Cal IT squared um, day at UCSD, the notion of having on an individual campus a Cal IT squared day. Well, of course, the first thing we wanted to do was to fuse the two campuses together. So we've had, over the last three years, we've had what we call all hands meetings. And the idea there is unifying the, and building the culture across these two campuses. But our director's retreat, um, which we had earlier this year, we decided that just once a year wasn't enough because the pace was picking up so much. And so there was a general consensus that in addition to these all hands meeting, the next one of which will be in, in March, um, that alternate between the campuses, we would six months off broaden out into the community uh, of the individual campus 
uh, the, uh, by having a day on that campus. And so this is the first one and then in, and up in uh, November will be in Irvine, will be the, the next one. The first uh, large uh, project we had to do was to get all of the ideas and dreams of the faculties together on both campuses into these new buildings. And you'll get a chance to, some of you, to take the tour today of, of the one that's coming up here. And Ramesh will talk a little bit more about it. Um, these are bringing new facilities to both campuses that we didn't have before. And, and that's already generating a whole new set of federal grants and industrial grants just because these are coming. Uh, it's, it's, it's already started. Uh, so that's a very exciting thing. The one at Irvine building will be ready next summer. And a little over a year from now, we uh, should be able to move into the one here. Now, many people say, well, how, gosh, things are, seems like popcorn. You know, things are just like going all the time at Cal ID Squared. How can I possibly keep up on it? Well, we've, from the beginning, been very fortunate that Stephanie Sides has built up a very strong team here in uh, communication. And so we have what we think of as a multimedia newspaper, our website, www.calit2.net. And if there are new federal grants, this is just um, as of la yesterday afternoon, this is the way the thing looks. It changes every day, literally. Um, if there's a major event, like the Cal IT Squared Day, uh, if, you, if there's a new personnel change, a new, all the press releases come down here. If there's a new industrial grant, like Charles Elkin and, with Sun and the um, Computer Science Department, uh, anything that goes on, we try to capture and put into the website, and in fact, uh, our webmaster has a whole new generation of this website that's uh, coming soon that will be even more sophisticated. So I uh, would just urge you to, to um, you know, check this out every so often. I send out a monthly communique to uh, our mailing list for all at Cal IT Squared in which we go back and have at the end all of the uh, web articles that have occurred in the last month uh, with live links to them. Um, so that if you missed anything, you can catch up.